what the, the moment an actor gets into charitable work, he is doing it for publicity. Why will an actor do anything for publicity? He is already a publicized guy. So there are a lot of people who point uh, guns at the person, but it, it's a very, very, it's, it's, it's debatable. So I guess moving along, one of the things that people ask me all the time is that, you know, you dropped out of high school, you know, you kind of sacrificed your youth, do you have any regrets? And I always end up saying, you know, absolutely not, because, you know, this is the, the premise of my legacy, of what I'm able to do in my life. But in your, going in your career, do you see at any point there's any regret that, 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 that you have today? No, no regret at all. If I wanted the life all over again, I will want the same life for me. Because I am a subtotal of those years which I have gone, which I have gone through with. If those years were not those people, I will not be sitting here and you will not be talking to me. So there is nothing that I have to do. You talk about dropout, I was not good in studies, I have told you, actually 38 percent marks. And I was not a great sports person. In fact, once I was running, my PT teacher told me, even if you run alone, you will come second. Till <laughs> 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 today, I have not been able to figure out how is it possible to run alone. And I will come second. <laughs> no, I think it's fantastic. You know, that's why I did my play on stage. Uh, because when Penguin had asked me to write my autobiography, when I was assembling it, and I suddenly said it's an interesting life, and I'm an actor, I should stage it rather than write it. Because, as an out-of-work actor, the only thing that inspired me was autobiographies of people. And that autobiography is also the first half of their life, not after they became successful. Chaplin is the one of the most beautiful, amazing autobiographies. But you, I always used to read it only till the page 320 because after that he became successful and it became boring. So, what I have today is the failure that I went through, not the successes. I'm in movie for the last 26 years. I'm 55. I only remember clearly the first 26 years of my life, the last 26 years of my life have passed through in a blink. Because I was wanting, oh, three films fair award, let me get the fourth film fair award. Oh, this national award, let me get this. This film has become a hit. Thank God I was not, the success of the film did not depend on mine, my shoulders, because it was always a hero, a typical hero. But no regrets. So, what do you think, as, as time goes on, what do you want to be remembered? I'll answer this question when I'm 40, more years past. <laughs> I don't know what I will want to be remembered. People who will remember me actually will be people, they will remember me as they will. The rest of the world, it doesn't matter how they remember me. I was passing through Amrish Puri's small board, uh, it's called Amrish Puri Road. At the end of it, it will be just a road. How do you remember Sanjeev Kumar, Meeta Patil, Kishore Kumar? We don't remember them. It doesn't matter to them. So I, it doesn't matter to me how people remember. If I have been kind to some people, they will always remember. Because a kind gesture never gets unnoticed. So that's why I try my level best to be kind to people. That's it. The loss will be for people who are close to me. Whether they are friends, family, or some encounter that I've had. Because the people don't have time, people don't remember their parents. So, where will they remember? It doesn't matter. And I'm not bitter about it. I'm sure, in, in my case, usually people only have three to four movies in their obituaries. I will have about twenty. Because that's the graph that I have worked on. But it will not actually matter to me. I want to live this moment. This is the most important factor of my life. These are the best things. How does it matter? I hope that I live in my dear least. There's so much to do. When you reach, when a lady reaches in her late thirties or early forties, he or she discovers what kind of a person she is. And when a man is about in late forties, he discovers what kind of a person I am. At that stage you either like yourself or you don't like yourself. I like myself. 
I like what I have done with my life based on my whatever I have done. So then you discover, oh now I have a thought process which needs to be channelized. There is so much to do. A lot of people ask me, how can you do run a foundation, run three schools, um, act there and go there and attend summits, etc. I, I always tell them what my grandfather used to tell me, a busy man has time for everything. <laughs> so, uh, what the motto I live by is, life's too short, so live it up. Is there a motto you live by? No, I think life is too long, live every moment. <laughs> So any memorable moment in your career you want to share that uh, sticks out the most or? Plenty. I think there are, my life is made out of memorable moments. Plenty. I, 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 I think, uh, I just want to, I just want to sort of stress on that whole thing that I spoke earlier was to be yourself. I think the achievement is not all the awards or the movies or the foreign directors that I've worked with. My achievement in this city is that I have not changed, I have not let this city changed me as a person. And that's my freedom. That's what makes me what, what I am. I, I recollect a lot of you. Richard Attenborough came and made uh, Gandhi here. I was auditioned for Nehru. And I prepared the whole speech. I cut my beard and I wore that whole thing. And then I went for Unfortunately, as I was going for the audition in Ashoka Hotel in Delhi, Richard Edinburgh was coming out of his room and saying, shaking hands with Russian state and telling him, I am so happy I got my name. So, and I was about to enter the room for the audition. So I, I lost my confidence completely and uh, then he asked the casting director, he said, this actor for what role? I said, I am Pandit Jawala Nehru. He said, sorry young chap, I have already finalized somebody else for that role. So I, I got angry with him. I said, how can you decide somebody else for that? Have you seen the audition? Have you seen the screen test? Have you seen the professional? Pro professionalism? You're a Britisher. You don't know how to... I started rambling. And then he said, okay, perform. Because he had to get rid of me. <laughs> so when he said perform, I could not say more than two lines. An audition which I had prepared so brilliantly. And those two lines that I said were so horrible. Then I told him, okay, give me another role. So he said, okay, you can go Khan Abdul Ghaffar Khan. Khan Abdul Ghaffar Khan, Frontier Gandhi was a taller man. To which the casting director said, no, no, I have already finalized somebody else for that role. He said, he's a little operator, he's taller and fit for the role. <laughs> when I came down in the lobby, I decided I will never see this film in my life. And I'll tell today I have not seen that film. Because sometimes your anger keeps you alive. <coughs> That's the most important thing. Your, your humiliation keeps you alive. When I was looking for work, I was humiliated so much. You, you get humiliated as an educated person, you get humiliated as a human being. So I wrote to my grandfather. I said, I want to go back to, my, to Simla, to Delhi, to teach. Because I don't think this city deserves me or I deserve this city. I can't make it. I was bored. This is a very sexy look. When you go bald earlier stages, may some hair go from here, some you go from here, very thin. And then I had the... I was about to say something else. I had the cuff. <laughs> May West has done said something very interesting. He said, just because women don't have balls doesn't mean they don't have balls. <laughs> so... So I, I had the guts to sort of still look for work. So I wrote to my grandfather that I am wanting to go back from this city. So he wrote a brilliant line, which I will have to say it in Hindi, and then I will try and translate that. He said, you have spent so much time over there. Your parents have really worked hard to give you some education. It's very important. Stay back and remember one thing. Viva wa aami, baris te nahi A man who is already drenched in water is not scared of the rain. Translation time. <laughs> Experiences are so many. I have facial fantasy, nobody knows about it. In Hamaki and Khan, that movie which ran for thousand years almost, there's a sequence, there's a sequence where I pass, there's a pillow sequence where we pass pillows on the terrace, we sing a song. I, one day, we were about to shoot that huge sequence with every actor there. 
I have gone for dinner to my friend Anil Kapoor's house and his wife says, Anupam, you are not blinking from one eye. So, I just noticed that my one eye is open only. The next morning when I was brushing my teeth, I discovered that the water is coming out of my mouth on its own. So, I went to the doctor in Bombay Hospital, Dr. Singhal, and he said, you have facial cancer. Just leave everything for two months, sit down at home and don't do anything. And you are an actor, don't tell anybody. Because actors, even they get smaller pimples, they take three days off. <laughs> when I was coming out of the hospital, I had two options. One is to go back to my house and hide myself for two months and get petrified every time there was a doorbell ringing. Or not go out. Or go to the shooting. So I chose the second path. I went to the shooting, straight to the, from the hospital and I was like this. Now even if I talk like this right now, you will feel uncomfortable. But I was actually like this. So I told my casting director and my whole team and I said, look, I have this problem, so what do we do? But I'm ready to shoot. He said, you are ready to shoot? I said, yeah, because otherwise you will lose a lot of money. And I shot that. The thing is, I did not want to get scared of my own imagination. So the world tries to frighten you with your shortcomings. I don't allow the world to make me feel smaller. You can't make me feel dwarf. <laughs> There's an arrogance about it. When you're honest, you're all arrogant. When you're yourself, you're arrogant. Because what will you make me feel small with? 